four, for three, for two, one last. I'm gonna wash my face this morning with the gentle clear 2% salicylic acid wash I still have the polyhydroxy acid face wash by Cetaphil but when I was reviewing the cleansers I found this one that I had in my stash and I was like I better finish this one up first so I'm back to this one <laughs> do you guys like my nail color it's a Zoya nail polish the color is Joni and you guys recommended this product thank you called Sechet Beat, a top coat. That combined with the OPI Nail Envy as a base coat. I mean, it's amazing how well the nail polish stays on. I've been impressed. So thank you for that recommendation. One thing I noticed though with the Zoya nail polishes, I'd never used one before, the brush. It's a lot narrower than the OPI. And at first I was like, ew, I don't know if I like this. This is just an aqueous microfiber towel. I'm just patting some of the drips off. At first I was like, I don't know if I like this, but it's actually better because with the larger breadth of, br of bristles, you end up getting on your cuticles a lot easy more easily. You have to be more conservative with the drop that you get from the bottle. Whereas with the narrower tip, I find you can get a sizable drop to cover the whole nail bed without spilling over onto your, onto your cuticles. Still using the PCA Skin Pigment Gel, the Kojic Acid, Azelaic Acid, Mambo Combo. I put it on while the skin is still a little damp to enhance penetration, but if I weren't washing my face first thing in the morning, which you don't have to do, especially as we're getting into the winter months when it's drier, you may want to back down on that. You can just put it on dry skin. I have really been happy with, what was I going to say, the Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel, but I'm almost finished with it. It's a very, very thin consistency. Um, but today, I think I'm going to come on with the Aven Intense Protect. This is actually a really good moisturizer too, I've noticed. It has, it's a chemical sunscreen. This you can't get in the States. It has triasorb in it, which is a UV filter. Triasorb is a UV filter. So it offers some, offers protection against UV, but it also, according to their studies, offers protection against visible light too. The main issue with visible light, blue light, HEV wavelengths is hyperpigmentation. See, if this were an American chemical sunscreen, I may be fine. I would probably be fine putting it around my eyes like this, but two or three hours later, it'd be like this. <laughs> it'd be seeping into my eyes. This, I don't have that issue with. It's amazing. I finished the Skin Aqua, by the way. A lot of you guys have been chiming in that you've been enjoying that one too. That's a Japanese sunscreen. I've started to come around to this Lancome Lash Adult Mascara. When I first got it, I was like, eh, what it is. But I've kind of sort of, I've developed a soft spot for it. I like it. You really need to give mascara, I find, if, if it's a mascara that you don't hate initially, but don't necessarily love, keep going with it because it, it, they, they get better with time, I've noticed, as you get into the formula. But one thing I don't like about this mascara, try as I, try, no matter how hard I try, it always seems to migrate to my upper eyelid area. So the cake stand turntable came in. It was a kit um, that I got on Amazon. Since I'm gonna get into, I have to bake a cake for an event and I, uh, I think I'm gonna kinda get into some more intense baking. I don't know, I'm, I'm excited for it. Anyways, um, it came with these little spatula gizmos for doing the sides of the cake. And then these pretty nice um, flat knives, one offset spatula for icing. 
This company, Mizen, reached out to me and offered to send me some of their knives. Jen Chapin, who y'all know I am a huge fan of, is always using these knives and raving about how good they are. So when they offered to send them to me, I was like, yes, please. And I guess they also threw in some pans too. So let's check these out. They look like they're really good quality. Looks like we have one black handle one, one slate gray one. A blue one, dang, I really need new knives. A little paring knife and a bread knife. I kind of think I'm gonna get into baking bread. This is a new, I'm, I really, I enjoy baking and I got some, I got some whole wheat flour for this cake and I'm like, well, what am I gonna do with all this flour? Bake bread, so <laughs> we'll see if I get into that, but <laughs> at least I've got a bread knife now. <laughs> Yeah, they reached out and were like, would you like us to send you a knife? And I was like, yes, please, because I've heard so many good things about these knives, and I desperately need a new knife, and it's been like on my list of things to get for a while now. I'm going to keep putting it off. Ooh. Wow, these are pretty nice. I didn't know they were gonna send me these. They just said, would you like a knife? <laughs> they really went all out. Thank you, Misa. All right, y'all, carrot cake making is about to commence. I got this recipe online. I will link it down below, but it sounds really good. I'm taking it somewhere so you won't actually see it sliced, although maybe I can capture a picture of a slice of it. Anyways, last night I prepared some carrot, I, I peeled and shredded some carrots because I was using it for a salad too. So I just went ahead and did a few more carrots for the carrot cake, but it's gonna have coconut in it, chopped up walnuts, raisins. I got golden and then this sun-made raisin container has been driving me nuts because the lid flops off all the time and the raisins down there are like kind of dry and crusty. Uh, so those are gonna go in and it also has crushed pineapple on it. I'm gonna actually double the recipe and make a four layer cake. That's my goal. However, I'm also doubling the recipe and making four layers in the event that one of the layers like fails, flops, whatever. I can do three layers or two layers. I can salvage something. <laughs> I have you guys on my cool new little icing stand that I just had to have. It's basically a lazy Susan. Anyways, I'm gonna start out with two cups of cashews that I'm just gonna soak in water. And technically my, because you're gonna blend all this together, my blender, you technically don't have to soak the cashews before you put them in just because of the nature of the way my blend tech is, but I'm not gonna risk it. From the club. I'm gonna go ahead and chop up the walnuts. I got these, they're current, this brand Fisher is currently on Ibotta. You get a dollar rebate, I think, which is actually pretty good. And I believe this was on sale at Kroger too. Y'all know I love my savings. Anyways, I was just looking at the back of the package and this sounds really good. This walnut and cranberry apple crumble. I'm gonna use the meat sheet. <laughs> I can't eat walnuts like this. They make my mouth itch. I have kind of a hint of oral allergy syndrome. It sort of overlaps with my eczema. But if the nuts are cooked, then I'm fine because it denatures the antigens. Not a problem. Wow, these new knives are really nice. All right. We got our nuts chopped. All right, we're gonna combine the wet ingredients. So I've got three cups of peeled shredded carrots here. Of course, a can of crushed pineapple logically would be two and a half cups instead of the two that I need. So I'm gonna try and remove half a cup because I, I worry that it'll end up being too watery if I have too much. Then we also need a cup of applesauce. All right, four teaspoons of vanilla extract. And two teaspoons of ACV. Dumping in the raisins. And I'm 
gonna sweeten this with shizzer. I'm gonna add the coconut to this too. It's kind of confusing because it says mix together the wet ingredients and then add them to the dry ingredients mixed. And, but it has coconut listed with the wet. I'm just gonna add it to this. Don't tell. All right, now we're gonna mix together the dry ingredients. We've got some Bob's Red Mill whole wheat stone ground flour. That sounds like a lot of work, <laughs> grinding wheat with a stone. I went ahead and bought a new thing of baking powder because I realized the baking powder that I've had expired a year ago and that stuff actually stopped working. Soda. I have cinnamon, I have ginger, I don't have nutmeg, but I have pumpkin spice. And pumpkin spice has cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, and clove. So I think I'm just gonna add this instead of the individual spices. Let's get this together. Ooh, <laughs> party foul. Oh my gosh, you guys, this smells so good. You could also make this as cupcakes or muffins or whatever. All right, I got my new cake molds here. I think the pros weigh out the batter into the mold so they have an equal distribution. I should have done that. All right, I'm putting them in the oven. Went ahead and drained the water off of the soaked cashews. You also need um, a can of coconut milk that has been chilled in the fridge. And if you're not aware of this, it is a beautiful thing. If you buy canned coconut milk like this and put it in your refrigerator, it separates out and you get this thick layer of cream on the top and then the coconut water settles to the bottom. If you take that cream off the top, you can actually whip it just like whipped cream. Or you can use it in recipes that would otherwise use like heavy whipping cream, like a French silk pie. You could use this in lieu of the cream. See how the cream settles out on the top? See, just scoop it out. And then we're gonna add some vanilla. We're gonna add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. That's gonna give it a little tang, kind of like cream cheese. All right, so I went ahead and flipped out the cakes and they came out perfectly. They're still cooling here. Interestingly enough, I only had enough batter left over to fill one of these. I think I just filled them maybe too much, but even though I doubled the recipe. All right, let's give it a little taste here. See if it needs more shizzle. Oh my gosh, it tastes like cream cheese. Tastes like cream cheese frosting. Mmm. Good ear. I'm not messing with that. Mm -mm -mm. Thick and juicy. I'm gonna put it in the fridge while the baking commences. All right, so the third one is completely cool, but I just wanted to show you guys how svelte these silicone bake molds are. Like, I will never go back to regular bake tins because it's just so much easier to get stuff out. All right, here we go. <laughs> Cross your fingers for me. I'm gonna do the leveling. Actually pull towards me. I think that'll be easier. Mm, I think the cake is too dense. All right, scratch that. <laughs> the cream cheese frosting definitely thickened up. All right, I'm just gonna go for it. It's definitely a rookie mistake on my part, for sure, is I 
should have had some toothpicks to anchor the layers. See, I didn't think of that because this top layer can just go whoop, sliding right off. Legit though, the, uh, the icing does taste like cream cheese icing. Over to the carrying case. I have a newfound respect for people who are professional cake decorator makers. No, it looks okay to me. I think it'll work. I think it's gonna taste great. That's all that matters, but hopefully it doesn't topple over. Uh... Tonight is the night when to become one. Daylight savings time, although by the time you guys are watching this, it will be after the fact. But yeah, I find it frustrating that it's daylight savings time as a YouTuber when that happens because not everywhere around the world cel celebrates as if it's a holiday, does daylight savings time. So inevitably, it's going to impact some of you guys depending you know, on the time, like your routine because it's gonna appear as though my video is late when it's now the new time for you guys because here in the US we're still doing daylight savings time, which I heard, well, actually Arizona doesn't do it and I think another state, but I heard there was talk they were gonna do away with daylight savings time, but then because of the pandemic, they elected to keep going on, which I think we can revisit that topic <laughs> because there's actually ample literature on the negative health effects of the time switch. Like there is an increase in car fatalities, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, um, I don't mind the fall back because we just sleep in an hour later. <laughs> and But it's a spring forward that nobody likes battery died and cut me off, rude. But yeah, I was ranting about the daylight savings time change. I'm just gonna hold you guys, cradle you in my arms and we're just gonna rock here and pour bathroom lighting. Ooh, did I turn blue? I kind of feel like the lighting changed and I hit a button or something and evoke cool tones. <laughs> Oh, uh, you'd think after all these years, I would know a thing or two about operating these cameras, but I just point and shoot and anyways, yeah, I was going on and on about the daylight savings time, how there's ample literature actually, how it has negative consequences on our health and all of these things. But yeah, we need to revisit canceling it because it just screws up everything. Since we operate on a global level, you know, we're, especially with the internet, I mean, we just all need to be on the same page time-wise. I mean, I get having time zones, but switching up the time in different time zones just confuses everything. Anyways, I wanted to update you guys. I am still adoring this Atoderm, Bioderma Atoderm Cream that um, I got from the Amazonian. Highly recommend it now that we're transitioning into colder months. Actually, it's kind of chilly here tonight. You know, it's probably like 80 degrees out. <laughs> I'm joking. It actually is kind of cool just by smoothing down skin cell edges and then helping with water retention, lubricating the skin, reducing those irritating frictional forces. And then the things that you're exposed to throughout the day, the irritants, they can further, you know, kind of chew up at your moisture barrier. Having moisturizer on there kind of helps cut down on the penetration of irritating things. And this one I have actually used on my face a few times. I always suggest you guys trying out your body moisturizers and lotions. Oh God, I'm not a lefty, but I'm having to hold you with my left hand because if I do the right hand, then I can't, you know, see if I'm in the frame. Anyways, uh, I always try. I always tell you guys try out your body moisturizers, lotions, creams on your face just to cut down on the number of products you have to use. A lot of them are more than fine. The difference in formulations are that body care products tend to have a lot more thickening agent added. And for that reason, people who have acne prone skin may find that they, you know, 
trigger more breakouts. That's kind of an individualized thing though. It's not one of these hard and fast rules. There are very few to know hard and fast rules when it comes to skincare other than protect your skin from the sun because, because UV is responsible for 80 to 90% of, of skin aging that's related to you know extrinsic things rather than intrinsic. Intrinsic implies you know your genetics and any underlying medical conditions that you might have that affect the rate of skin aging. Anyways, yeah, protecting your skin from the sun is the is the golden rule. And taking care of your body, healthy lifestyle factors. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap up the vlog here because I'm not a lefty and you guys are heavy. You guys are heavy. You've been lifting the weights, putting on some muscle, and you're, you're getting heavy. So I'm gonna wrap up the vlog here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.